He is. Good morning, Grove. I'd just like to thank um, Pastor Mariner in his absence for allowing me to be before the people of Grove. It's truly an honor. I definitely don't take it lightly. I thank Pastor Barbie as well and my, all my sister keepers for their support with me. That's a, that's a, that's a great thing right there. <laughs> um, I'd like to give honor to Sister Shirley Mariner and uh, Sister Tracy Barbie as well in their absence. Um, as you know, in this month, uh, in our bulletin, it says that we are, our theme is stepping into a bright future stepping into a bright future. You know, as we came out of 2013, you know, some of us were surprised we even made it. Some of us were just glad that 2013 was over. Some of us were just happy to see that at 12 o'clock I got a fresh start. I got a clean slate. I got a new opportunity to live a different life. But as we take 2014 into our hands, my motto for this year is forward in 14. I'm going forward in 14. I learned a lot of lessons, not just in 2013, but years past. I have made a lot of changes in my life, and I have decided that I am going forward in 14. I'll share that with you if you want. So let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, God, we just thank you for just being the breath within us. Thank you, Father, for being all that we need, all that we ever hope for. And God, as we come before you today, Father God, we just thank you for just loving us beyond ourselves, for forgiving us, for keeping us, for comforting us. And God, I desire at this moment, Lord, that the voice that they hear is only yours that when they look up here, Father God, all they see is you. That God, that the words that you have given me will be for the edification of your kingdom, that we may take it out, God, and be a help to our brothers and sisters. Amen. If you will turn with me to Psalms 94, and I will be reading verse 17 through 19. And I'm using a New Living Translations Bible. Still hear some pages turning, so. And it reads, unless the Lord had helped me I would soon have settled in silence of the grave. I cried out, I am slipping, but your unfailing love, O oh Lord, supported me. When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. My title for today is Don't Forget What God Has Done. Don't forget what he's done. As we look back over this past year and years past, just take a moment with me and reflect on the things that you went through. Just in January 2013, when the spring came, were you blossoming like flowers? Were you growing? Were you blooming? Or were you wilting? In the summertime, when the sun was shining bright, were, was your light so shining before men? Or were you that dark cloud? When harvest time rolled around, did you feel like you were in a drought? Or did you know it was harvest time for you? Looking back on our lives, as the, as the scripture says, unless the Lord had helped me, I would have settled in silence. I would have died. That's what it's saying. We all know that there's a physical death, but what about emotional death? depression, suicidal tendencies, anger, frustration, 
wanting to kill somebody else. What about that? Spiritual death, feeling so far away from God that you don't even think God hears you. You don't think he sees you. You can't even cry. You can't even pray. You don't have a song in your heart. You can't reach out to nobody because you don't even know what's going on with you. Nothing. Physically dead. Not physically dead, but just dead on the inside. The word of the Lord says that God's unfailing love supports us, never leaves us, encourages us through every trial. So we can make a choice. 2014, it can be a better year, a brighter year, even through our trials. So when you find yourself in a trial and in trouble, please don't think it won't happen to you. There was a time in my life when I actually thought that if I pursued certain things in life, that I would get to that place where I had no issues. I actually thought that if I had enough money, if I had enough stuff, if I had the right people in my life, that I would be okay. I would like to tell you that that is a lie. It is a lie, and it's, a, it's, it's something that you definitely want to have an understanding about. And I thought I was the only one that thought that. But as we go on in our trials, the Bible says that we will have afflictions, because it says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us out of them all. Not some, not a few, but all. Remember, God, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Don't forget, as his word says, as he was with Moses, he will be with you. As he was with your family, as he went with your friends, as you saw others get blessed. When you go back in your life and you think about last year, and you think about the things that you went through, and you think about the things you experienced. So when things show up in your life this year, remember, he is the same God. The problems are not bigger than him. The problems are not greater than him. The problems are not stronger than him. God is all through everything that we're going through. He already knows we're going to deal with these things. And he's already prepared us for it. He doesn't fail. He never loses. And as children of the Most High God, we don't lose either. So remember what God has done. Whenever, whatever you face in this year, know that you are victorious in all things. You can succeed. Even if you have to take that test over again, make the choice that I'm going to do it better this time. Make the choice that I'm going to do it different this time. Make the choice that I'm going to change and things are going to be different for me this time. Be a better example to your friends and loved ones. Have some people around you that can support you. Sometimes you have to just be by yourself. Sometimes God won't even let you call nobody. Sometimes God will have you in such a place that when you call people, they don't answer. You think that you think that they're ignoring you, but God is blocking that. He's blocking that. It's great to have good friends and support, but God wants us to connect with him. That we can know that he got our back. That we can know that he is our provider. That we can know that he is our protector. I went through some things last year. In years past, I'll tell you one thing. Um, I was dealing with the issue with my mortgage, and I just said, you know what, God? Okay, I'm just going, I ain't going to try to figure it out. I'm not going to try to do anything. I'm just going to wait for you. God had me in my neighborhood to walk in my neighborhood and pray for my neighborhood because I knew I wasn't the only person that was going through it. I walked up and down the streets. My kids thought I was weird, but I was walking up and down the streets praying for my neighbors because I said, God, I am not the only one going through this. I am not the only one struggling with this issue. I am not the only one. So that was a lesson that I learned, that when I have a problem, that I need to go and pray for other people, not just worry so much about myself, but pray for others as well. We can't forget that even when things are going well with us, that God is still around. When the blessings begin to rain down from heaven, don't forget who reigns. Don't forget who got you there. 
Don't forget who brought you through those storms. Don't forget who changed those things. And when you see other people going through stuff, don't talk about them. Pray for them. You don't have to know their name. You don't have to know their situation. But if you're walking past somebody, and those of you that have the spirit of discernment, you know that when God tells you to pray for somebody, just pray for them. You don't have to know what's going on in their life. You don't have to know every detail. Just say, do it, God. In your will, in your way, just do it, God. Open that door for him, God. Move that situation for him, God. Change it around for him, God. We want God to do those things for us today. We know that our minds play tricks on us. We doubt. We fear. We question. We try to rush God. But remember the last trials you had. Remember the patience that you've learned. Trust that God will do what he said. Like I said, he is our provider. He is our protector. He is a promise keeper. But I love that God is my peace. Peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace that don't make sense. Peace that I have when I want to go off. Peace that has when I want to just say forget it. Peace that has when I want to let somebody have it. Peace that lets me go to sleep at night. When I ain't got to be up at night worrying about stuff, I'm going to bed. Okay? I'm going to sleep. God says in his word, John 15, 20, that my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, but as I give. He gave it to us, so when are you going to take it? He gave it to you, so take it. I made a choice to take the peace of God to pass all understanding. I made a choice that I was going to do that in the midst of my trials, in the midst of my tribulations. Make that choice today. That peace comes from having a relationship with Christ. You can't just, you can't just be walking around saying, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. What about your relationship with God? Just like when we have relationships with other people, Ladies, men, when you're pursuing somebody, when you want a relationship with them, you spend time with them. You get to know them. You encourage them. You woo them. God wants the same thing. Wants the same thing. Got to have a relationship with the Lord. I have learned to let God be my husband. I have learned to. Let God be my provider. I have learned to let God be all that I need. I have learned that. And even if you are married, God is still your husband. Even if you are a man, God is still your husband. As a little girl, I, was, I grew up going to church, and my mom was the organist. And I used to sit on the organ with my mom. And, you know, my mother taught me how to read music so I would know when to turn the pages, you know. I could sing any hymn in the book. But as I grew up, I realized that just singing hymns and going to church with my mother and being there with her was not going to get me what I needed. Yes, it's good to have a song in your heart. But the Bible says to study the word, to have an understanding of the word. And when we have those situations that are going on in our lives, I can go back into 2013 when I was crying, saturating my pillow. And God said, I got it, but you got to let me have it. I got it, but you got to get out the way. I got it, but I need you to be quiet. Be quiet. Don't say nothing else. The preceding scriptures in this psalm talks about vengeance. Talks about your enemies being arrogant and strong and puffed up. Talks about the things that are going on around your life that just seem like they ain't fair. But we have to learn to hold our peace and let God fight our battles. So as we go into 2014, as we make the choice to do things differently in this year. As situations rise up around you, as, as God is using those things to make you a better person, to shape you, to pull things out of you that you didn't even know were in you, we have to remember that. 
God is the same. He's always there. He never leaves. He's holding our hand. I think about my life, and I, all I can do is share my life with you. Like I said, I've learned a lot of things. Getting in my own way. Making my own decisions. Going ahead of God. So I share with you this today because I want you to know I did it already. You don't have to do it. You ain't got to do it. You don't have to make the same mistakes I made. You don't have to go down those roads I went on because I already did it. I had a young lady I was uh, ministering to the other day, and she said, Miss Sarah, you're so wise. I said, it's because I done did a lot of dumb stuff. She said, what? She didn't understand what I was saying. I said, because I've done a lot of dumb things. I said, the things I've learned, I've learned because I said, oh, guess I can't go that way. Guess I can't go that way. Oh, guess I got to go this way, God. I had to come to that understanding that, that God is the one that's leading me. I try so hard every day to just say, God, you know, I want to be who you say I am. When I look in the mirror, you know, you don't, see, you don't see what God sees. You don't hear what God hears. You don't know the things that he's doing in your life. I say that, you know, that scripture that says all things work together for good, I said my face needs to be right there. That's me. Because all the things that I've been through, and maybe to you they might not be that big, but to me they were mountains. To me they were deep crevices. To me, there were places that I didn't think I would return from. That God, I didn't think God would ever let me stand before his people and do anything. But we know that God is a redeeming God. He's a restorative God. He can resurrect you when you're dead, if you trust him. He can turn things around in your life. And then people look at you, they have no idea what you've been through. Just like Pastor Barbie said, he said, when he found out that I, that I have two grandchildren, and I do. But I bless God for them. I may not look like the typical grandmother, but I act like one. <laughs> I act like one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get off on another tangent. <laughs> I was just wanting to share with you about having a relationship with God. That as we go forward in this year, in 2014, as you know, God has already gone before you. He already knows everything that you're going to deal with this year. So know that when it shows up, that God has already prepared you to handle it. But we have to stop for a moment and listen to God. We have to stop for a moment and not make a knee-jerk reaction, but get on our knees and take the time to say, okay, God, you already knew this was coming. You already prepared this for me. Let me not mess it up by getting in your way, by making my own decisions, by trying to handle it on my own, trying to be that independent person. That's great. But if your independence has nothing to do with the dependence of God, then there will be, then you'll start all over again. 2014 can be a brighter year, a better year, a stronger year, a prosperous year, a blessed year, a peaceful year for you. In the midst of trials, in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of situations, it can be all that you need it to be. If you allow God to be the guide, if you allow God to be the one that gets you where you need to go, I challenge you that when you have an issue, that you pray. I challenge you that when you have an issue, that you get your Bible and turn to the back and find out what that situation is and find those scriptures that can help you get through that situation. 
You may not remember to do it immediately, but when you do remember it, immediately do it. Get an accountability partner. Get somebody that can hold you accountable to your salvation and your righteousness in God. Not somebody that's going to judge you. Not somebody that's going to that's gonna try to be perfect, but somebody that's going to say, okay, I, yeah, I know you, yeah, you messed that up, but come on. <laughs> There's somebody that can help you be strong in God, be strong in his word, be strong in all that he has for you. You can make that decision that when everything around you wants to, wants to fall apart, you want to worry and cave in, you will choose to worship. That when you are the DJ at your own pity party, you will be reminded how great is our God. There won't be any silence in your heart because you will have the songs of the Lord in your spirit because you will remember how good God has been. You will hold on, to, hold on to those memories so they will see you through, help you through this year for your steps to a brighter future. Like I said, be a better example to your brothers and sisters. We, we're not perfect, but there's perfection in God. Allow yourself to be different this year. And as we enjoy the third Sunday of 2014, moving forward, you can make that decision to have a brighter future. And that only comes from a relationship with God, like I said. It doesn't matter what you did last year. It doesn't matter what you did last week. It doesn't matter what you did last night. But you can choose that you want to have a different life, that you want to have a stronger life that you want things to be different. That just being happy about having peace and joy, not about stuff, not about people, just having joy. I can be happy, that's because something's happening. But joy is just because. Joy is just because, you know what God, I, I am okay. I'm just okay. Everything may not be the way I want it to be, but it sure ain't the way it should be or could be. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. The strength of God to be able to hold on. Even if all you're holding on is with that one finger, you're still holding on. You haven't let go yet. And as you hold on, God will give you the strength to add another one and another one and another one till you have your hand holding on. And as you're holding on with that hand and crying out to God with the other hand, God will say, just let go and hold on to me. Let me be all that you need in everything. Let me walk you through situations that's coming up in your life. Let me open doors that no man can open. Let me close some doors that you should have closed. Let me move people out of your life that you don't need. Let me bring people into your life that you didn't even think that would be, a pro be prosperous in your life. Yeah, you meet people sometimes and you say, oh, oh, they're a nice person, but you just never know. I don't entertain strangers at all. I don't meet strangers is what I want to say. My kids say it all the time. You're always talking to people. You always, But you just never know who you're going to meet. You can be a blessing to them or they can be a blessing to you. Be kind to people. You never know when you're going to cross their path again. Let God be who, who you need him to be for you this year. 2014. Go forward in 14. Go hard in 14. Make changes in 14. I know people don't make really resolutions anymore, but they make promises. They, whatever they do to, to say, okay, God, this year is going to be different. When you write those things down, put a scripture beside it. When you write those things down, put a scripture beside it, put a prayer beside it. And when it comes up, you'll be able to pull it up and say, okay, I, I, I did say I'm going to do this differently. When Pastor Barbie said about tithing, about taking it to the next level, I was like, ooh, ooh. 
I remember when I became a tither, I said, God, I already don't have no money. So this 10%, really? I worked, with a, I worked with a friend of mine, and I shared it with him, and he said to me, he said, this is how much I believe God. He said, if you tithe your 10% and God don't do what you need him to do, I will give you your money back. That's how much he meant. That's how, he, much, how much he believed in God. I said, well, I'm going to put this joker, I'm going to see what this is about. So 12 years later, I'm still tithing. I did the same thing. About five years ago, I was talking with my best friend. We've been best friends since we were in second grade. She's in Ohio. She said, I, I want to tithe. I want to do this, but I don't have enough money. And God reminded me of what somebody did for me. He said, do you trust me enough to do that? I know you give me my 10%, but do you trust me enough to do that? Put my name on the line. Yes. Try me. So I said, I'm going to tell you. And I said it with tears in my eyes because I couldn't believe I was saying it. I couldn't believe I was saying it. I said, okay. I said, listen. You start tithing. Listen, okay, this is how it's going to work. I said, you start tithing your 10%. I said, if you miss anything, I will give you your money back. Five years later, she's still tithing. She's still giving to God. So I said all that to say that when Pastor Barbie was talking about taking things to the next level, because that's what I want. I want to take things to the next level. It's great to be where I am right now, but God has more. God has more. He don't want our money, nor do he need it. But it's about your obedience to God. Obedience is what's going to put you where you need to be. Obedience is going to put you right there where, you, where God wants you to be. Trust God. So when Pastor Barbie said that, I felt something in myself, and I said, really? Mm. So I guess me and God got something to talk about. I'm sure I'm going to lose, but that's okay. Y'all just keep me in prayer. So if y'all see me running through here, it's because I have taken it to the next level. And, I don't, and I'm just trusting God. But I challenge you to trust God. Whether it's in your tithing, whether it's in your giving of yourself in ministry, whether it's being kind to people, whether it's praying for those who despitefully use you, whether it's being nice to your family, whatever it is that God is going to challenge you this year, trust God in that. Allow God to be who he says he is in your life. Allow him to be first because you're first in his. That's an amazing thing for God to love all of us the same, that we're all number one. We don't have to run against each other. We don't have to race against each other. We don't have to try to cover each other because we're all number one. We're all first in the sight of God. If you decide that you want to have that relationship with the God that I love, that the God that has changed me, the God that has loved me, the God that has strengthened me, the God that brought me through many years, that has allowed me to see 2014 and go forward in 14. We here at Grove will allow you to be introduced to the amazing, magnificent Jesus Christ that can save you, that can strengthen you, that can turn you around, that can make you look better than you ever could thought, that will feed you with the word, that will strengthen you, that will protect you, that will go before you and fight your battles, that will make sure you have more than enough. You can come to the altar and let God into your life today. 
if you have already had a relationship with God and the path has gotten dark and the things you went through in years past, you don't feel like you don't